Hey guys, this is Jason with Ray of Light Tarot. I know normally I do my videos live, but I'm pre-recording these for New Year's. I'll put them up probably Sunday night-ish or Monday. Um, I'm really busy working on um, getting caught up with uh, personal readings for people right now, and um, it's gonna be a busy weekend coming up, So, and I'm probably gonna be having to take some time off as well and not be, you know, interacting much. So I'm gonna get recorded uh, videos up for New Year's readings for you guys. Um, I'm doing, I'm gonna do the signs, uh, earth, air, water, and fire. I'm gonna group them together like that for the New Year's readings, just to get them up for you guys. Um, if you wanna book a reading, I'm gonna put my information in the description. Uh, best thing to do is either go to the website or email me, or just check the description and it'll tell you what to do. All right, so let's get started. This is for Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn, earth signs. Uh, for the new year, basically a New Year's reading um, for love, soulmate, and if anything career-wise comes out, we'll, t we'll we'll touch on that. But mainly, you know, you guys know I specialize in the love stuff. I'm the love doctor, so we're gonna see what's going on with Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn, all Earth signs, and their soulmate for the new year. And I hope everybody has has had a lovely 2018 and is ready to welcome 2019 in. So let's see. Thank you, universe. Thank you, source. Thank you, spirit. Thank you, angels, archangels, spirit guides, and ancestors for allowing me to connect to the energy of the earth signs for this New Year's reading and to their soulmates. Thank you for the clear and direct messages. All right, let's see what's up. What is the current energy? And we're pulling for earth signs, Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn for your soulmate right now. What's the current energy for the soulmate of the majority of Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn who need this right now? What's the energy for their soulmate? Whoa, devil. That's that Capricorn energy coming out right off the bat, guys. So if you're a Capricorn, pay attention. Denme la atención. I'm pulling six cards for your soulmate's energy and an overall. What's that? Okay. That's six. That's six. Let's see what the overall energy is. Overall for the soulmate. Uh-oh. Overall energy for your soulmate, Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn. Your soulmate has the Ten of Wands. So uh, they're carrying a heavy load right now. Could be dealing with a Leo. We've got the Strength card here. And you've also got the Capricorn card. So because this is for Earth signs, you could be dealing with an Earth sign. If you are Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, you could also be dealing with a Capricorn here. If you are a Capricorn specifically and you're dealing with a Leo, this reading could definitely be for you. Let's see what's going on. Also, we've got some strong air energy with the King of Swords here. That is Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Here's what we've got, guys. Like I said, overall energy is the Ten of Wands. So the soulmate is coming to the end of a difficult cycle. Heavy burdens. Um, this is like, this feels like carrying a weight uphill. Someone who's really been through a lot and, you know, they're, they're struggling. They're trying to keep their head above water is what it feels like. And behind that card, I'm looking at the six of swords in reverse so they're having trouble moving on from you they're feeling very left out in the cold even if maybe they're the ones who broke things off they're feeling left out in the cold so they're definitely regretting that decision because i get the feeling that some of you the soulmate walked away and now they're kind of regretting what they've done so here you go you got the devil card capricorn energy two of swords four of cups strength King of Swords, and then right here at the tail end, you've got the Page of Cups. So that's why I say, I do in a sense feel like it's someone who maybe walked away from the connection because with this, the Devil, and then the Two of Swords and the Four of Cups, that's showing them as being very resistant to this connection. Very resistant and very uh, closed off, blocked. Um, some, some major blockages and not really open to it. But at the same time, with this Ten of Wands energy, and the Six of Swords in reverse, behind that, the Five of Pentacles, they're feeling left out in the cold here, and um, they, they, they're, being, they're unable to move on. They want to move on, but they're unable to. Why? Because of this. What's right behind it? The Two of Cups. Soulmate energy, guys. Okay. I'm going to get a couple clarifiers, because this is a um, reading for three, for, for Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. So, although I'm doing the the, diff the four signs to kind of compact the readings because I've got so many personals I'm working on. Um, I do want to get a little more detailed into it since we we're doing it this way. I'd like to know a little bit more about this devil energy. What's going on here? That two of swords has come out twice now. Four of cups has come out twice now. So we don't need to clarify anymore. Okay. 
So the way the reading came out was the devil, the two of swords, and the four of cups. I just clarified the devil, the two of swords, and the four of cups came out. So it's pretty, pretty clear that it's a confirmation of what's going on here. They're blocked off. However, there's something to mention that come that really stands out to me in this Two of Swords from my Vice Versa deck. You can see, yes, this person is blocked off. They feel like they have a decision to make and they're not making it. They're really, you know, delaying it. But look here, they've got that, that see that huge full moon there? This is someone who's very aware of how they feel, okay? Although they're resisting the connection, they're not unaware of the connection. They're very aware of it. This is deep feelings, intuition, um, Things, this is, these feelings are being hidden and not expressed, but they're definitely being felt, okay? This is very deep. This, you know, it's like the saying, still waters run deep. Uh, they run really deep in this, in this circumstance. Uh, and then you've got the four of cups here. So I'll show you both four of cups. This is definitely someone who is resistant um, to the love. And so, you know, it's almost a feeling like they've missed their chance. Uh... I feel like they were being resistant in the connection when you when you two were in communi better communication or together at some point or talking about being together, flirting with the idea of being together, right? And now they're at a place where they're still, yes, blocked off and sort of resistant to this love, this divinely guided love, but it's more from a place of regret. Okay, it's a place of regret and wishing that they, they had done something differently in the past. The reason they're not changing is because they think it's too late. Okay, they feel it's too late and they don't think they can fix this situation. So that's sad, right? That's, that's a shame. And um, clearly, there's going to be an attempt to fix the situation, but it's not coming yet. It's probably going to come. This is for the new year. So um, I'm, I'm looking at the first week of January into about the first 10 days of January for this. And like I said, it ends with the page of, of cups, which for me, a lot of times, no, listen, pages are messengers. They deliver messages and cups is, is water. That's, that's emotions, right? But it's, it's love. Okay. That for this, this is a love reading and it is love. So it can be a message of love, literally speaking. It's a message of love and figuratively speaking. When I see the Page of Cups in my Rider deck, that's an apology. I think I've told you guys this in other soulmate readings. For me, this feels like an apology usually, depending on where it comes out in the reading, but it's coming out right at the end of this reading where this person's so resistant, okay? So that feels like an apology coming, but right now, they're not at a place where they're willing or able to apologize. They're so focused on their own pain, their own um, lack of fulfillment, um, discontent and that's tough especially at the end of the year when you're trying to ring in a new year and you want to be positive and look toward you know the good things coming to be in that in that um type of mindset again i said you you know virgo taurus capricorn you could be dealing with a, with a fellow capricorn could be dealing with a leo could be dealing with gemini libra or aquarius cups energy too is here that's cancer scorpio pisces that's not to be left out but strong leo strong capricorn and strong air energy so that's what we've got represented here. Um, these are just energies, though, that are represented. And so it can be any sign. I am going to find out a little bit more about this strength card coming through. I feel more than just representing Leo that this is what they're going through. And they've probably had some sort of awakening. That's usually the case in a soulmate connection. It awakens you to certain things in your life. Um, it sort of brings you back to life. Um, but it doesn't always change your behavior or your willing. It doesn't, that doesn't always accompany a will with it, a willingness to change. So that can be the problem. Why is the strength card here, guys? Show me what's up with the strength card. All right. We've got, I can't even see what that was. I think that was the queen of pentacles. So, um, we'll talk about that in just a second. Yeah, Queen of Pentacles, so it's definitely about you, Earth Signs. Here you are showing up, uh, clarifying their Leo energy, their Strength card. You're showing up, clarifying it. Uh, Queen of Pentacles, that's you, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, who we're doing the reading for right now. Uh, Nine of Wands. Okay. Nine of Swords. And Seven of Pentacles. So, very clear picture why this Strength card is here. This is what's going on with the strength card. 
the strength that they're having to, to, to go through is actually a lot of it's about them fighting. They're fighting. They're having to be strong and they're fighting. They're fighting their, their connection with you. They're fighting this, this cycle that's ending with the Ten of Wands, the Nine of Wands, and the Nine of Swords. This is obviously a really painful cycle coming to an end. The swords are those, see those illuminated swords? That's a lot of truth coming into this person. But look at this, this card. Does that, that person is not happy. This truth that's coming in is not something that's making them happy, even if it's good news. Uh, even if a lot of this illumination that they're they are coming toward is great stuff that they're learning and um, you know really is illuminating their mind, their hearts, their spirit, it's not something that's necessarily happy at the moment because it doesn't feel so good. So just be aware of that and be patient with your um, your person. You know, energetically speaking, you're, it doesn't feel like there's any communication with the Two of Swords and then this Four of Cups. I doubt you're in communication with them at all right now. So when I say to be patient, obviously it's not like you're on the phone. Hey, what's up? I'm not saying be patient in your conversations, but energetically speaking, you can be patient as well. And that's even harder, I think, sometimes. The energy that you're putting out towards someone is so important. And, um, you know, it's important to have patience with, pe with people, especially the people we love. If you love this person, then, you know, it's important to try to have a little bit of sympathy for what they're going through. And granted, they should have sympathy for you and what you're going through as well. But, um, you know, that's not your responsibility to take care of them and how they behave. You can only take care of your side of the street and how you behave. So try to have a little bit of um, empathy, sympathy, and send them love, light, healing energy, um, because they are the wounded warrior here with the Nine of Wands. And that Nine of Swords is a lot of anxiety, a lot of illumination and truth coming through, but it's not necessarily making them happy at this moment. But it definitely has to do with you, Virgo, Taurus, or Capricorn. It has all to do with you, with the Queen of Pentacles there. And then the uh, Seven of Pentacles, because this is literally telling me that what it's about is you and it's about the relationship. That tree represents your relationship, your connection, right? Just imagine that tree representing your connection and all those pinnacles on that tree are like the fruit that grows on a tree. It's like an orange tree. Those aren't oranges, though. They're pinnacles. And that's earth energy. And the person is assessing the tree. They're looking at that relationship and the fruit that's growing and trying to figure out, is it ripe? Is it, is it, is it fresh? Is it time to pick that fruit? Should I let it grow a little more? Should I pick it and let it ripen after I pick it? What, what, they're trying to figure out when the right time is to make their move, right? And they're coming out of this strength card in this period of assessment as the king of swords. What does that mean? It means all this stuff that's happening with the strength card, which is the truth coming in, that, that feeling of burden, thinking about you, all of that, assessing the relationship, is leading them into this feeling of, yes, being more mature, because the kings are mature energy, right? No matter what suit it is, the king is mature, so they're going to be coming out more mature. Uh, but with the king of swords, the swords are communication, that's air energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, and it's communication, it's logic, um, it can be a little cutting. So they're not coming out with an emotional energy from this. They're, they're really trying to make a head over heart decision apparently and you know, focus on what's, what makes sense, what makes sense in the future. And that make, you know, this time of year, I think we're all doing that in a lot of ways in our lives, right? So you know, don't take it, don't, try not to let it hurt your feelings if they're not coming at you with an emotional energy right now. They are going to, this is emotions. That cup's full of emotions. But right now, they're coming out of the strength uh, card, which we just clarified, with the King of Swords energy. Very logical. But the King of Swords is a great communicator. So if it's communication you're seeking, these two cards are definitely both communication. Now, the King of Swords is not going out of his way to mo make movement. You can see he's sitting on his throne. He's not going out of his way to make movement towards you to communicate with you. But he does communicate, and he communicates really well. So that's good. The Page of Cups does make movement. He does bring a message. As I said, he's the messenger. And I feel strongly, based on the rest of this reading and how I usually interpret the Page of Cups, that this is an apology, okay? This is an apology coming for you guys, and it's going to make things better. Um, it doesn't feel like it's going to heal a lot of things that need to be healed over time. You guys are uh, in the beginning, maybe, of a long process, but it definitely feels like it's gonna make things better or at least open the door to possibilities for things to improve. Let me get some clarifiers on that page of cups and that apology. Clarify that page of cups for me, please, guys. Okay, nice, 10 of cups, nice. What's all this? We got a lot of cards coming out here. 
All right, so here's what we've got. Five of Cups, Five of Wands, Ace of Pentacles, Six of Wands, and Ten of Cups. That's the clarifier for our Page of Cups. So his apology, this is what it represents. I feel like this is some explanation. Um, this is about being in a sort of a, a low vibration, sort of a mindset of sadness, depression, anxiety, feeling the loss of something. So that makes sense because there is a feeling of loss here um, and it, it's sort of an explanation about that. And then there may be a little conflict. Look, you can see that volcano erupting in the background there with the five of wands. So there may be some conflict here in this um, relationship, even with the apology, but you know, sometimes that conflict is necessary. Sometimes what kills a relationship is one party or the other avoiding conflict when it's healthy to have it out and really, you know, state how you feel. Um, and it, I think that's exactly what this is. I think that's, it, it's healthy because if you look, we've got this conflict, right? And look what comes next, the Ace of Pentacles. That's a new beginning. And the Earth energy, the, the, the Pentacles is Earth energy. That's something tangible. That's real. That's physical. That's, that's in physical form. So this is something real and lasting that's going to be beginning anew. And this is, uh, the Six of Wands represents victory. This is literally the, uh, someone who is returning victorious from battle. And on this side, they're being cheered on. They're being welcomed back by their... Their military here. You can see it's just a really good card. It's a card of strength and victory. So there's going to be a lot of strength. I feel like what this is saying is after there's been this sadness and explaining, you know, this feeling of, of loss and separation in the relationship and a little bit of conflict even, there's going to be a new beginning, a feeling of victory, which is like the, the relationship strengthening, okay, more than it's ever been before strengthened. And the Ten of Cups, guys, gosh, I mean... When the cards come out like this, you just have to be happy and excited and just sort of be receptive to it. Welcome it in, because this is good stuff. Like, the, you can't ask for more, right? This is beautiful. So I'm like just saying, hey, good stuff. Happy New Year, Virgo, Taurus, and Capricorn. Happy New Year. I hope this resonated for you guys. I hope that um, it, it, it resonates and it is for you and, because it looks good after some tough things the, the, uh, the past little end of the year here. So really looks good. Let's get some Romance Angel Advice cards and wrap this thing up for you guys. Oh. Well, healing. Okay. Healing family issues. Your love life benefits as you forgive your parents. Stay optimistic about your love life. Positive thinking and faith will bring you romance. And your feelings are real and worth exploring. You guys know I don't love the Oracle cards too much, but they're usually on point, so take them how they resonate for you. I hope this gives you some good guidance for the new year. And again, I'm sorry I'm not able to do my lives, but I want to put these up at a certain time later uh, in the weekend or early uh, toward New Year's Eve. And so um, I have to pre-record them. So I hope this resonates for you guys. I'm back to working on personals. And uh, if you need a personal reading, uh, either go to the website, rayoflighttarot.com and set it up there, or you can um, click the link in the uh, description with my prices, choose an option for yourself, click the link, and then email me with your uh, scheduled request or your questions afterward. Thanks guys. Happy New Year.